Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Clair Shores. How's everybody doing today? All right. Welcome to our annual meeting for 2018. Even though, even though it is for 2019, it's our annual meeting where we talk about all the projects that we did in 2018. So this is a great day, and I, I, I got to let you know we have a lot of good members of our committee that are really shining this year, doing a lot of work with us. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of come through and do our typical introduction. Uh, we typically start all our meetings with the, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd like to have Daniel Colvert lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. He's one of our scholarship offerings. I'm going <coughs> At every meeting, we also go and we identify what our Water Environmental Committee mission statement is. And our statement is, the St. Clair Shores Waterfront Environmental Committee is committed to the conservation, protection, safe use, and enjoyment of Lake St. Clair for our current and future generations. And this is so important for us. Uh, my name is Mark Ballen. I'm the chairman of the committee. And I'm so glad we have all the members and a lot of resource members in here today. I was just going to go around and do a little introduction of some of our members just so that we can, uh, you know who we all are. Dave Rebello. Say something good. Why are you on the committee? I'm here because I've always been, literally my whole life, interested in the cleanliness of the lake and the use of Lake St. Clair, where basically it's been in my backyard my whole life. At least 90% of my life I've seen it, almost every day, and that's why I'm here. And we have our treasurer, Aaron Stahl. <laughs> Hi, um, Aaron Stahl, and I, I just absolutely love this committee. I've been on it since 2003 as a council liaison, and then I stayed with these guys. It's a great committee. Chris Vitale, I'm the council liaison. This is a committee where you can really literally pitch in and make a difference, cleaning up the lakefront and the freeway entrances and all the other various cleanups to keep trash out of the water. Eric Eggert, uh, been here my whole life. Love the water, and I also grew up on it, so I love to take care of it. Um, and I'm going to run it over here to Joe St. John. My name is Jose John, and I fished this lake for over 70 years. Good reason. <laughs> um, my name is Sarah Schultz, and I'm on the committee because I went to school for environmental science, and I was looking for a way to get back in and help clean up the lake. So, Student liaison, Lucas. Yeah. Um, I'm Lucas Stinson. I'm the student representative from South Lake High School, and I I'm here because I want to do something more for the committee than just be in NHS. Great. And I got to go out the doors, apologize, but these wonderful ladies are signing people in and I want to make sure they introduce themselves, even though you can't see them. Or come on in, come on in, come on in. Oh, we got the mayor too. Yep. Hey, hi, Mark. How are you? No, I'm good. All right, thanks. <laughs> Come on, come on up here. We got to see you. We, you guys are always hiding in the back. <laughs> this is Heidi. She's our recording secretary. Well, that's who I am. I'm <laughs> Heidi McGinnis. I'm the recording secretary. I also work on the scholarship committee. I'm Kathy Nixon, and I'm on the committee. How many years? <laughs> uh, ten. Ten years. All right. All right. Thank you. Is any other committee members that I? Oh, we got a couple scholarship offerings here. Can you guys do a little induction who we are? Uh, yeah, my name is Daniel Cuvier. I'm a local resident and a uh, concerned citizen about the, the local water quality issues that we're facing today. Great. Um, I'm Anthony Cuvier. Uh, I'm also part of the scholarship program. Happy to be a sponsor today. Um, resident of St. Clair Shores as well my whole entire life. So we're all here to help clean up. All right. And one other offeree here. 
I thank you, Mark. Uh, Kevin Hertel, been a member of this committee since I think 2010, and uh, I joined because the cleanliness of Lake St. Clair is very important to me. I plan to raise a family. We are now raising a family in this community, and I want to make sure my son can enjoy all the things that I enjoyed about Lake St. Clair growing up. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. So, all right. so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this program over, but again, I've got to make sure I want to before I do that, I want to uh, give a, a shout out for some other dignitaries we have in the audience tonight. We have Pete, Pete Rubino, Councilman. Uh, we have uh, uh, Councilman uh, Asia, And we have Kip Walby, Mayor Kip Walby in the back. And we got Congre uh, Commissioner Leonetti. There we go. And uh, we might have a few more. Oh, oh, I know Kevin. Yeah, Kevin introduced himself already. Thanks, Pete. But Pete, I got to give you a shout out too. You were involved with our committee for a long time. Pete Rubino, he's in the back. He gave us a lot of good guidance too. So, all right, I'm going to turn it over to Erin. She's she does so much for the committee. I got to let everybody know. Everybody in St. Clair Shores, Erin does everything. She is a treasure. She runs the freeway cleanup, and she's really good at it. It's one of our big programs. Do you want to come up, Erin, and explain? Thank you very much. And this is on? All right, good. All right, Lucas, if you want to join join me up here. Well, I'm, I, I guess I'm going to be doing the treasurer report first, so <laughs> you can stay up with me. Um, I One of the things, uh, I, I hopefully everyone received the, their copy of the uh, educational activity coloring booklet. It's this. It's at the front counter. So this is something new that we're doing this year. And with all of our esteemed resource members here, we're hoping that you can give us a lot of input, um, make uh, some corrections if need be. And also, we have a, a sheet out front that looks like this. If you can sign up when we get all the corrections done, if you can tell us how many booklets you would like, and we'll deliver them to you. All right, so, and that's just on the, on the desk outside. And we appreciate that. Um, so on to the financial report. And now that we, um, so we had a really great year in 2008. Uh, we had a um, little over $7,800 in revenue. And as you can see from the list there, uh, the biggest one was the from the rain barrels, our revenue. We, ha we sold 64 rain barrels. And since the beginning of this program in 2013, we were just too shy of 300 rain barrels sold. And you can see in City Hall, right by the cashier's um, desk there, uh, the rain barrel um, that looks like that. <laughs> also, uh, some of our revenue, the City of St. Clair Shores allocation of the $3,000, and we hope that they see that we use the money wisely and hope they continue that allocation. We would appreciate it. Uh, also, a corporate grant for the kayak and canoe program, and also, uh, generous individual donations from Loretto Lorenzo and Councilwoman Candace Rusi. And then we had just under $13,000 in expenses, uh, the largest ones being the rain barrels, because we buy them in, in 50s, and uh, we had to buy uh, two lots of those, and nautical coast cleanup supplies, and we had our great lake marker project, uh, which you'll hear about more, and uh, the, to purchase the kayak and canoe, and some recognition plaques that we did, and also social media. Um, Eric Eggert, you, I think you missed saying that you are a social media um, member. And uh, uh, we sold a bunch of Facebook ads for our events, and um, it, it, I think that boosted up our our uh, attendance at the different events. So in the end, we have a very healthy balance of 
$9,185.24, taking us into uh, 2019 and starting us off really well. And at the bottom of this slide, it uh, shows uh, the Nautical Coast cleanup. I wanted to point out that the Nautical Coast cleanup, it's one of our largest events, and a, the big portion of that is due to donations. And I kind of broke it up. It, typically, the Nautical Coast cleanup costs between uh, $10,000 and $13,000 to put on, but that includes the $9,000 worth of donations. $5,500 in services, $2,000 approximately in supplies, and $1,500 worth of uh, food. And this year, uh, the committee paid uh, just a little over $3,000 for to add some more uh, supplies, rakes, that kind of thing. So um, on this slide, it just gives you a visual representation of um, our revenues and our expenditures. And in blue, you can see the rain barrels, 22% uh, of the revenues and 27% of the expenditures. And on this slide, I added in, um, if you add in the donations for our revenues and then add in, or for the Nautical Coast cleanup, and then add in the approximate costs of the goods and services donated as expenditures, the Nautical Coast cleanup is 54% of our committee's uh, revenues and 55% of our committee's expenditures. So I just wanted to give you that visual. It is a very large portion of our, um, of our committee. And as I mentioned a couple times, already that this um, all of our projects everything that we do it wouldn't be possible with the generous contributions from our donors and I wanted to point most of these are for the nautical coast cleanup um, I do want to mention uh, you know, point out Tom Cleaver from the we are here foundation and also the advanced aquatics dive their generosity in helping out the Nautical Coast cleanup um, it is just it's just a big giant shout out to them. And um, everybody on this list, I'll just quickly uh, go through it. Jefferson Yacht Club, the Lock St. Clair, Kiwanis, Chicken Shack, Tubby Sub, GFL, um, Loretto, Lorenzo, and also Councilwoman Rusi, the Journey Zen Coffee Shop, the Sea Life, Marine Aquarium, City of St. Clair Shores, the IBM Corporation, Dell, Allegra, Donut Express, MDOT, Macomb County DPW, Lowe's, and then our, our um, scholarship sponsors, uh, Representative Kevin Hertel and Dan Daniel and Anthony Corvier. I just want to, if we can give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Uh, and thank you again for all of our donation or donors. Do I just jump right on in? All right. So um, I, again, I'm Erin Stahl. I'm also not only the treasurer but the coordinator for the I-94 ramp cleanup. And it was uh, Due to this committee, when I first got on, um, I made the suggestion, how about we clean up those ramps? You know, the entrance into our city, I used to live in Detroit, and when I would go on uh, Kadju, there was all kinds of debris, and then when I moved to St. Clair Shores, um, I suggested it to the committee, and they're like, what a great idea, because a, a lot of people don't realize that that debris that people throw out of the car windows and when you're walking on the street, throwing it on the street, well, if you've ever at that light, when you go up the ramp at 9, 10, 11, or 12 mile, look at the, the little storm drain. And those storm drains, all on the roads, drain directly to Lake St. Clair. So the reason why this committee took on this project is because you know, it's all about protecting the lake. We also added a few things to this program, which is uh, beautifying uh, the entrances 
um, making sure, well, this year we, we upped it a notch and uh, due to a, a very nice um, mix up with ordering the, the lawn mowers from Lowe's, uh, we got two for the price of one. But um, we've uh, upped this project and for the beautification aspect and Lucas is gonna, uh, pointing the, um, we have an environmentally friendly electric uh, lawnmower that we just do the entrances. Since we already have permits from MDOT to have our volunteers go out and clean up, we figured we, we would also um, do that as well. Because I guess this year MDOT's, uh, they're, they used to do three times a year for mowing around the freeways and I had been told that it's going down to two. So we have to come up with a solution, but until we do, our volunteers will help out with that. But, uh, and we, we are in our 14th year, and so this year we had, well, our goals have always been um, about 100 bags and 35 volunteers, and we've been surpassing that year after year after year. Um, so this year it was a whopping 154 bags of trash picked up and we had 106 volunteers. And Lucas is sporting our, our, our vest that we wear. MDOT provides our lovely vest. And one year we uh, were out there and when we had the orange vest without the volunteer. And someone said, oh, go back to prison. So we immediately. <laughs> We just immediately threw the volunteer on there. Now we have so many people just coming to us and saying, thank you, thank you so much for doing this. Um, a lot of people think, oh, we'll just send the prisoners out there. Well, we don't want our tax dollars being raised. So, you know, thank, thank goodness for all of our volunteers. And we do try to make it fun. We, um, we give a prize for the most unique item found, and Lucas is going to... This is some of the things that we've collected over the last couple of years. I mean, magic wands and love notes and um, all, all kinds of interesting things. Yeah, love notes. Um, but we do try to make it fun for our volunteers. And I think in the previous slide, you could kind of see that, that you know, we do have fun uh, while making a difference. So thank you. Yay. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody, let's give Erin a hand. She does so much for us here. And, and she has like all the tools for the cleanup. See all these tools up here? <laughs> like she like puts them in her garage and then we got to clean them. It, great. She stores them nice and neatly, make sure they're maintained and protected. That's awesome. Thank you, Erin, so much. Um, all right here. This is great. And you know, again, I want to thank Lucas again for coming up here. He's our student liaison uh, for uh, Lakeview, right? Lakeshore, Lakeshore, oh. South Lake, South Lake. That's right, South Lake. Sorry. <laughs> well, we want more student liaisons. We have Gail Ashburn in the back. She's one of our teacher liaisons for South Lake. She really organizes a lot of her kids. It's really cool what she does too. And I know. We couldn't do it without the schools. We try to keep the kids involved. We really want more kids involved. And I know uh, Carl Paulson is in the back too. He just came in too. So I know he's a big supporter of our group and it's awesome. We need uh, more people from Lakeview though. Even though my, I, I'm from Lakeview District, you know, it's hard to get kids because they're you know, busy inside. We want to get them outside, right? And uh, we want to have a lot of fun with them. So uh, I want to turn this over now to Eric who's our social media guru. And uh, if, if, are, you, are you live streaming this? Oh, last year you were live streaming the whole movie, <laughs> the whole, right onto the Facebook, so. Not this year, though. Oh, okay, here we go, let's get back. And again, I thank you all our committee members here, so here we go. Slides up. Good afternoon. You need this. Do I? Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, this year, we actually uh, did a lot of uh, different act, different uh, outreaches with, through social media and our website. Uh, to start out our website this year, uh, we had 6,700 uh, visitors come from our, come to our website, which is uh, we're trying to get more activity on the website. Uh, 
55% of the uh, activity came from Google itself, and 21% of it came from uh, Facebook. Uh, and then the rest of it came from other sources, which were un un unidentified. Uh, so we're trying to drive more, more movement to our website, um, as well to our Facebook page. Uh, our Facebook page has over 1,100 uh, people following it. And uh, our most busiest time is during, uh, during the Nautical Coast cleanup. Uh, we had over 30,000 reaches from Facebook. Uh, that uh, it reached for the Nautical Coast cleanup. I, I did a couple of videos during that time and we had over 2,000 views of organically viewed on that on for those videos. Uh, we've had uh, people come f to the Nautical Coast Cleanup from uh, Oakland University that found out through our Facebook page. So we are reaching it just not in our own community, but through the whole metro area, which is really good because we want to make it aware and spread our message not just through through our city, but through the rest of the counties and the metro area because it all happens, it all affects us, so we want to make everyone else aware. Uh, we've also uh, reached out uh, for each uh, I-94 ramp cleanup. We've had uh, 13,000 reaches come from just those uh, ads alone for the uh, cleanups. And we've had people come from Roseville, East Point, uh, Warren, uh, that they've seen on Facebook because it's part all part of our community. It's not just us. So we're always trying to outreach every in every different way. And we're always looking for uh, others to, you know, help us reach because we can't do it alone. We always have to have uh, everyone in the community help us reach out to other people, their friends, family. It makes a big difference. And another unique uh, thing that we came across this year was we had two students contact us through Facebook and wanted to do interviews with Joe for uh, school projects. Uh, one was from Dearborn and the other one was uh, from Northern Oakland County. I'm not too sure of what the uh, city was at the time, but uh, I think it was, wasn't it MSU a school project, Joe? MSU and the other one was from Dearborn. So uh, we're reaching in different places that we haven't done before, and we're looking to grow this year as well. Uh, so if anyone wants to go and look at uh, our Facebook page, it's uh, St. Clair Shores Waterfront Environmental Committee, or our website is scswec.com or .org. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, that's, uh, that's real important. As you guys know, social media is really growing, and we are sustaining what we're doing, and we really want to encourage. That's one of our main goals for this year is to try to increase what we're doing on Facebook. So I know there's some individuals that have been saying, hey, we can help out. And, and any ideas you got, look us up on Facebook, make some suggestions, and we can have a good time. That's great. Um, I'm, I'm good. I need a, a Heidi to come back from, uh, there she is from the front desk. She's, uh, she's gonna present the kayaks. Thank you, Heidi. The kayak grant in the sun. The Kayak Grant Initiative is a program that was spearheaded by Christian Duran, a longtime member of our committee, who unfortunately could not attend our meeting today. We have a corporate sponsor who contributes toward the cost of kayaks or canoes. These have been placed in the high schools in St. Clair Shores, including South Lake, Lakeview, Lakeshore, and North Lake. All high school students grades 9th through 12th grades are encouraged to participate in the projects of the St. Clair Shores Waterfront Environmental Committee. Fill out a scholarship application and then submit it by the due date and by the end of May uh, you'll be eligible to win a kayak or canoe. The award is based on the amount of hours that you volunteer for our projects. These include the nautical coast cleanup, storm drain stenciling, I-94 cleanups, 
or perhaps you have another project that you would like to do with our committee. Look for the dates in the, uh, on our flyer. And remember, clean water starts with you. <laughs> the committee also offers $500 scholarships to high school seniors who live in St. Clair Shores and or go to school in St. Clair Shores. The students must participate in the projects of the St. Clair Shores Waterfront Environmental Committee and also answer several environmental questions. This year's scholarship donors are State Representative Kevin Hertel. Kevin, would you like to come up here? And Daniel and Anthony Cuvier. Would you like to come up also? Representative Kevin Hertel represents the 18th district, including the communities of East Point, St. Clair Shores, and part of the village of Gross Point Shores. He has also been a longtime member of this committee and has been very active in the committee's projects. The committee is very fortunate to have him as a member and he keeps us apprised of the actions of the State House as they relate to environmental issues in Michigan and in St. Clair Shores. He will be speaking to us briefly about the actions in Lansing to fund improvements at Chapitan. Do you wanna talk about that now? Want me to do that first? That's fine. Thank you, Heidi, and good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. It's an even greater pleasure to represent this community in the state legislature. Uh, and it's because of this committee and groups like this across our city that make that such a joy to do. Uh, I enjoy working with people across our community every single day towards policy that not only benefits our community, but benefits the entire state as a whole. Uh, you know, a, a big priority of mine, and it's because of the work that I did on this community since 2010 and working with people like Joe St. John, who is a staple to this committee, uh, was the health and, and well-being of Lake St. Clair. And a lot of that uh, comes down to the combined sewer overflows that we have experienced for many years across this community. And I have always said that it's not just one level of government that has to address this problem. It has to be the city government, working with the county government, working with our state government, and the federal government. Every level of government has to come to the table and find real solutions to this problem. And for decades, since I was very little, uh, we have talked about combined sewer overflows throughout our communities. Uh, but I think we're starting to see real solutions to some of these problems. It's because people are finally coming to the table and working to do that. So. Uh, Last year at this meeting, uh, Candace Miller was here and talked about some of the work that her uh, staff had been doing uh, after they had dealt with the uh, horrible sinkhole that happened here in Macomb County. They were able to focus on the issues they wanted to work on. And we have been working closely with Candace Miller and her team to try to find uh, solutions to some of these problems. Uh, we've had two town halls now uh, out at McEnray's with Representative Pete Lacido from, well, now he's a state senator. Uh, he, I guess he received a promotion in this last election. Uh, but we have had two large town halls. I think the largest attendance there was over 500 residents came out from across the county to, to learn about these issues. And uh, the last one, Candace uh, talked about a project that they had been working on here in St. Clair Shores. And I have to give credit to Mayor Kip Walby, to the members of the council who worked with uh, Candace's office to do a, a test across our community to develop, to see the, the flow uh, of uh, rainwater and sewage throughout our system to see where they can find excess capacity and how they can find ways to end the combined sewer overflows. So it was the city working with the county uh, that determined some of that. Candace's team put together an incredible plan, I believe, that will expand the Chapitan retention basin uh, right down here at nine miles. So it'll push the gates closer out to the lake so they can retain more rainwater in, uh, there when we have a large storm event, a large rain event. Uh, and then they looked at the existing infrastructure and the pipes. And can they use some of that infrastructure to try to hold back some of that rainwater when we have large storms uh, so that we're not dumping into Lake St. Clair? Now, they believe through the system that they're designing now uh, that they can stop about three quarters of the entire combined sewer overflows out of the Chapitan Retention Basin. And that's to me, is a significant amount. Now, if you were to completely separate all the sewer systems at the southern end of St. Clair Shores and the city of East Point, that project would cost north of $300 million, probably closer to $400 million. And once you got into it, it would probably become even more expensive than that. Uh, it's a very old and outdated infrastructure. And that's what makes it so expensive. 
Uh, but this system, using existing space in the pipes, uh, by putting gates in and managing the flow, stopping three quarters of the combined sewer overflows into Lake St. Clair, will cost about $30 million. And from my perspective, when you look at it, uh, that's less than 10% of the overall costs with a huge upside to the equation. And so Candace came to myself and the rest of the Macomb County delegation and said, we need help from the state. We need some money. And we were able, through the appropriations process in lame duck, in a budget supplemental, in working with the leadership in the House, the Senate, and the governor, we were able to find $3 million to go towards that project. And that's what Candace had asked for. Uh, she is now working with members of the federal delegation to try to find some money at the national level. And I believe she will be successful there. And then they have some, some monies, I believe, within their office to already go towards the project. So within a year, we might be able to get this project done. Shovels on the ground, uh, the retention expanded so that we can cut off three quarters of the combined sewer overflows uh, that come out of the Chapman Retention Base. And I want to give huge credit to Candace Miller and her team and all the other officials that worked with her on this project. So I think it's a big win for our community. I was happy to work on it at the state level. Uh, and, and it wasn't just me. I have to give a lot of credit to the entire Macomb delegation, all 10 members from across Macomb County, who made sure we were pushing to get that funding. So uh, with that, and I think that's what you wanted me to cover. Is that correct, Mark? Uh, I think we'll present the scholarship now. So Maxwell, if you'd like to come up. So when I was on the committee before I served in the state legislature, I was able to be a part of the committee that reviewed the applications for the scholarships. And I have to tell you, it's an amazing experience to go over the writings that uh, these high school students send in. Uh, they do work uh, with our committee, and, and they have the requirement of the scholarship. As Heidi said, they have to participate in committee events. Uh, but I think the most important thing, one of the most important things this committee does is make sure that we engage young people in the process so that the next generation is buying in to the health and wellness of Lake St. Clair and what they can do directly to impact that. So that's why I'm so pleased to be able to provide this scholarship to Maxwell Wynn. Uh, thank you so much for the work that you did with our committee uh, and putting the, 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 de the deep thought you did into those uh, essay questions as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Do you want to say a few words? Oh, are you live streaming or taking no, a picture? No, no, no. All right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I am Max Wynn. I'm a senior at Lakeshore High School, dual enrolled as a sophomore at Macomb Community College for my Associates of Arts. I am honored to re be receiving this award today for St. Clair Shores um, Water and Bi environmental committee. I want to first give a special thank you to the all the sponsors for this award and to everyone in the committee for all the effort they contribute for a healthier lake and a caring community. I want to start off by telling my own experience on how I came to develop and understand the critical issues of our lake. Since seventh grade, since seventh God. Since seventh grade, my family has gone to the fireworks celebration for the 4th of July every year at the Veterans Memorial Park. It has been a pleasurable experience to go to the event, especially since we have the opportunity to watch the fireworks over one of nature's greatest creations. Last year, last year I started to develop the... Oh, my God. Last year, I started to develop my education to, um, on the environment from my classes at Macomb. Because of this, I decided to go to the 23rd to the 23rd National Na um, Nautical, Coast Clean Nautical Coast Cleanup. When I started, um, when I came to, the, to that beach for the first time since the last year, I was dreadfully astonished by the amount of debris and rotting seaweed that washed up on that beach. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that all we had, um, there was all this debris that could exist, let alone that it could be cleaned up in just the amount of time we had. Nevertheless, in just three hour and a half hours, we created a clean and healthy beach for our shoreline with only 400 volunteers. 
Last year, we cleaned up the shores together for a total amount of 23.4 tons of garbage with only 400 volunteers. 400 volunteers to me is a gigantic number, and I've never seen a community that is willing to spend the time and effort to help clean, keep our beaches clean. That being said, I want to talk about some ideas that I believe would help keep our lake clean in a healthy condition. Maintenance is important, an important factor for anything in life. Like when you drive a car, you have to change the oil every so often to keep it from breaking down. Likewise, I think it is very beneficial if we could have monthly or even bi-weekly sessions to maintain a healthy and aquatic ecosystem. Along with this, I want to stress the point of, of how much capability an individual has. Each and every volunteer from last week's from last year's cleanup, was able to recruit another person. We would, if each, oh my God, wait. If each and every volunteer from last year's cleanup was able to recruit just one other person, we would have nearly over 800 volunteers helping. And the following year, if the people do the same, we would have then 1,600 volunteers willing to preserve a healthy environment. The community that we have can only keep growing stronger. We all can make a difference through our actions, through spending awareness and maintaining a clean environment. Thank you all so much for allowing me the opportunity to serve the St. Clair Shores Wire Waterfront Environmental Committee, and I look forward to contributing to a greater community and ecosystem. ecosystem. I'm going to call Nolan Gervin up next. I know he has to get to a swim meet. He's probably late already. So uh, he's a senior at South Lake High School and has volunteered for the Nautical Coast Cleanup. He's also volunteered in feeding the homeless and mentoring youth at elementary schools. Nolan has been described by one of his teachers as having superior, being superior academically and encompasses all the qualities of a true cavalier. His goal is to work as an environmental engineer. Would you like to say a few words? Good evening. Like she said, my name is Nolan Durvin and I'm a senior at South Lake High School. And I'm just very grateful for this opportunity because money doesn't come easy for some people. And there's money out there for people. And like people say that college is very expensive and that you have to take out loans and stuff. But if you really search out there, then you can find it easily. Um, one of the things I was a like, suggestion of like Mark was saying earlier that we need to involve more students in this because we can't do this forever. So if we involve more students, this can grow and grow and grow so it can grow for, go, go forever. So one of the such suggestions I, was, I made in my essays was that if we involve all three school districts, like that kind of like a so-so competition in a way, so we can like what, whichever school holds or recycles the most items, like plastic water bottles, styrofoam trays, stuff like that, we can use that as an incentive, like half days of schools or no school, which I liked hearing. Because um, that, that would really get kids into the idea of helping our community out. Or we can like take a field trip or any other ideas that we can use. We can just use that. But uh, like I said again, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. And I very I thank all my sponsors right here and everyone who came out here and support this. Thank you. If you need to go to your swim meet, I'll let you go. <laughs> okay, take a picture. Yeah, we're going to talk about our sponsors. So now I'll speak about the other sponsors of our scholarships. Daniel and Anthony Cuvier, both Lakeview graduates, will briefly speak to us about their five-month, more than 2,200-mile walk for water quality on the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine this past year. They made this adventure a fundraiser so that they could sponsor two of our scholarships. We would like them to briefly share a minute or two about their experience. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Daniel Cuvier. Uh, I just wanted to thank the committee and everyone who's here today that dedicated themselves to clean water in our community uh, and just briefly touch on who I and my brother are and what we are doing. So last spring, my brother Anthony and I founded the Walk for Water Quality fundraiser in which we hiked the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. Um, 
to raise awareness to the outdated sewer infrastructure that's degrading our local recreation waters and more importantly, the source of our drinking water. Uh, in addition to raising awareness, we also hope to raise funds to these local environmental concerns. So we created a Facebook fundraiser and we set a modest goal of $5,000. Uh, we're, today, we're proud to say that because of our generous donors, we raised just shy of $6,000. Um, we know that it's not enough money to separate the sewer systems, but it was more than enough to give us hope that we could invoke a change in the way we approach our water quality. Um, so I'm going to share with you a, a quote on change here by Nelson Mandela, who once said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. After all, how can we solve a problem if we didn't know it existed in the first place? <clears throat> My brother and I believe that education provides an individual with a foundation in which they can build their future, and that is why we chose to sponsor the St. Clair Shores Waterfront Environmental Committee's Student Scholarship Program. Today, I'm honored to sponsor an intelligent young woman with a bright future ahead of her, Jessica Vondermas. Thank you. Testing. All right. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Jessica. Um, I'm a senior at Lakeview High School. And um, like many of you, I grew up on the water and um, boating with my family all the time. And so in participating in one of the nautical coast cleanups, um, I witnessed a lot of, you know, the dangers that are threatening our lakes right now. It was very moving, and it really, you know, prompted me to participate more in uh, working with Joe and the stencilings, and working with Aaron and the '94 cleanups. And um, I'm really grateful for what those opportunities um, have done for me, and I'm very grateful for your generosity. So thank you so much, you guys. I'm honored. <laughs> Uh, hi, everybody. As you know, I'm Anthony Cuvier. Uh, my whole life, I've been a citizen of St. Clair Shores. I'm also a Lakeview alumni, so it's nice to see all the schools involved. And you were saying there's not enough Lakeview, so I'm not a student anymore, but there's one of us up here. Uh, so a few years ago, as my brother said, uh, we started becoming more active, and it all started by meeting a man of the name Doug Martz. Uh, he really opened our eyes up to the water quality issues that have been plaguing our communities for decades now, as he taught us. So we knew we had to get more involved, and we knew we had to do something about this. Uh, and after attending multiple meetings, we made the decision to walk the talk, and we literally decided to take a walk for 2,200 miles about through the Appalachian Trail. Uh, we came across many obstacles along the way from bears, wild boars, um, mice, and even flying squirrels trying to steal your food at nighttime to weeks of rain. Uh, but one of the hardest things on the, on the journey was going and getting water, clean water, and finding it, and reliable sources for this water. Some days we'd have to hike 20 miles and unknowing if the water was safe or not. So before we left the trail, we knew that we had to find a way where this money could be raised and allocated in a manner that would be, uh, make a difference locally. So that was when we intended uh, the Waterfront Environmental Committee's Earth Day cleanup and when we found out about the scholarship program. Uh, and as my brother said, there's no better way than education in our eyes to advance our future and give us future hope. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody again. I'd really like to thank all of the donors for the fundraiser and everyone who their contributions is really gonna make a difference and look to the future because we are going to be allocating more funds soon and we'll keep everybody updated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. All right. Uh, and again, I think what this scholarship thing is just another outreach part of our program because talk, we had a great meeting with them this week and 
they want to help our committee more and more. So more people get involved, the better. It's a great opportunity. And thank you, Lucas, for handing out the student liaison. We need more student liaisons out there. It's really key. Um, I, too, the kayak program, I love the kayak. This is my kayak right up here. I got this kayak like two years ago. I've only used it four times. It's always on a lake, on a river up north someplace, right? I want to use it on Lake Sinclair. So our committee, we've been working with Peter and Heidi and everybody. We're trying to find ways we can launch kayaks on Lake Sinclair and use them safely. So we got these programs. We want to work with everybody. You guys probably have great ideas with that, too. I know you're outdoors. So I'm going to turn this over to Rebello. This is a great opportunity. He's been, you know, he does everything in St. Clair Shore. So thanks, Dave. Um, so I always told him, you know, little music. Uh, anyone who knows sing that song? Anyone know? Okay. We'll get back to that in a second. Okay, because there'll be more. No one knows who sang that. That's okay. Um, a couple other people uh, that have walked in and so forth, I just wanted to note. I saw the superintendent here of uh, uh, South Lake, uh, Todd Van Hiltmeyer. He left, uh, I think he's outside maybe with a, one of the students and so forth. So it's part of our South Lake contingency. Uh, thank you, along with uh, some of the people that do the hardest jobs, really. Uh, Mrs. Gail, Miss Gail Ashburn, so South Lake. Uh, the, I'm not sure where the Lakeview superintendent was here. Oh, there he is, right there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Carl Paulson. Okay. Didn't do a good job. You're sitting right in front of me. So um, thank you for coming. We have a, uh, is Joe here? There he, he's still here. Joe is with the St. Clair Shores um, He's been involved. How many years have you been involved with waterfront issues along St. Clair Shores? Since we've been here. Since we've been here. So thank you for everything. Thank you for everything you put in at uh, St. Clair Shores um, Advisory Council, Waterfront Advisory Council. So thanks for coming. I saw Peter Asia here. Mayor Walby, SMSDA. Okay. Mayor St. Clair Shores. There's probably not a guy in here that knows as much what's going on. So maybe one of your guys can come next year and talk to us about the sewers, the water, and so forth. Because I believe you're the, you're the chairman of the whole SMSDA. So good guy to have here. Uh, Peter Asher, we saw you. Kevin Hertel, he's gone. Uh, let's see here. I just wanted to make sure I saw some of the people. I hope I don't forget anybody. Um, our council liaisons, we had Chris Vitale's here, and I know Peter Rubino has helped us over the years and so forth as council liaisons. Anthony Lewis, are you here? Macomb County Public Works, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Want to make sure we got you there. So Bill Gamble, St. Clair Shores Assistant uh, City Manager, thanks for coming. Okay. Peter McInnes, he's here from the Lock St. Clair Kalanis, along with Brian Maisie. He's here with the, from the St. Clair Shores Kalanis. So um, he's along with, uh, does a lot here for St. Clair Shores. So where were we at here? Our 23rd annual nautical coast cleanup. And you can see right up there the numbers we've been putting up. This event has been getting bigger and bigger every year. And uh, we get a lot of help, a lot of questions, a lot more people associating uh, and coming over with us. As you can see, we target certain areas. We've got two public beaches here in St. Clair Shores that we do. We do the lakefront parks. We do the private beaches. We do shoreline areas. One of the biggest reasons why um, I like to do this is I have always had issues as far as um, the cleanliness of water, and I always wanted to protect our water. Water pollution is always bothered me, and that's why I'm standing up here, too, um, to take care of some of these issues. It was a way for me to do it. So we want to thank everybody for coming out and doing this. A show of hands, how many people have been involved with this in the past, in this room? How many people have come out and, uh, well, fantastic. Okay, great number of people. Hope to see some of you who haven't had the chance to come out uh, and do this with us next year. And next year would be 
Sunday, May 19th, okay? To me, it's always been the traditional kickoff of, uh, of uh, summer and all the summer things that we're doing. It's a big day around here in St. Clair Shores. Beaches, shoreline, underwater, Sunday, May 19th. We've always reported at the Jefferson uh, uh, Yacht Club. Ken, all the help you've given us over the years with the Jefferson Yacht Club, we really do appreciate it. So a lot of help, a lot of community support. It's a great community service. City of St. Clair Shores has always been on board, always helped us. So we really do appreciate that. Over the years, uh, some of the statistics that we've had as far as um, the numbers that we've put up. Uh, Mark, do you, do you have that? Some of the tonnage and tons and tons and tons of stuff. Joe? 23 tons of, you name it, we've pulled out of the lake, you know. Over 23 years, we've pulled out 757 tons of all kinds of stuff out of that lake along the shoreline. So I'm sure we made a difference uh, to the communities in St. Clair, uh, that surround St. Clair Shores as well as St. Clair Shores. So it's a fun event. More and more kids, the schools are helping out, um, and we appreciate the help. We try to make it a, a, a fun a fun day. And really it goes on from 8 o'clock to maybe noon, 1 o'clock, where we have a party and so forth when we come back at, from, at the Jefferson Yacht Club. So we really appreciate all the help and so forth. So moving on. If anyone ever has any questions about this stuff, we have a beautiful Facebook page that Eric does, and uh, we'll answer all your questions. If you have groups, if you have people that want to come in, your family and friends, they make a they make a day of it, and they and they happy about it because they've made a difference. One other thing here, I wanted to talk about. I don't know if anyone can see that. I'm not sure which one's Daniel Boone. And Davy Crockett, here these guys are. They punched through the Cumberland guy next time. Um, we call this a kiosk. For no other, <laughs> for no better word, this is the second one that we're producing right now. We have the first one. And the first one, these are educational tools. We display these. One of them is at Veterans Memorial Park. The other one is at the Blossom Heath Pier, okay? The first one, the ones that are sitting in the park and at the pier right now, have to do with the watershed of Lake St. Clair. Totally a great educational tool for people. They like to come by. They learn a little bit about what's going on and how it all the water systems and everything, how the drainage is into the lake. So this is a great uh, tool for education. Veterans Memorial Park, I noticed a lot of people taking pictures with it, a lot of people reading it, and uh, so we decided, I mean, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I actually came up with the idea while I was up in the Traverse City area, and I was looking out, and they had this great one, the Grand Traverse Bay Watershed, and I said, you know what, we would qualify for a, something with a watershed for Lake St. Clair, so we sort of reproduced the one they had, but put uh, the Lake St. Clair information in it. This is the second bout that we're gonna do. This is the Lake St. Clair sports fish. So these are the, the top fish that are in Lake St. Clair. We're gonna ex put them in the same spots at the park and at the pier uh, next spring. So as soon as it thaws out, we're gonna put these in. Do we have, a, we don't have a picture, do we? Of, do you got a picture of the, uh, the actual kiosk that's sitting in the lake? Okay. Okay, that's what it looks like. So that's the size. The guy on the left really helped a lot with the first one, Mark Hoderick. I, w I wish he was here. But uh, so look for this the next time you're in the park. It's sitting right behind the, uh, the pavilion, the music pavilion right on the lake. So a lot of people come by and look at it. Education, fun stuff. And that one's going to go somewhere around in there too. So that's the top of it. It's the actual top of it. So there's two of them. So that's fun educational stuff. So fantastic, thanks guys. 
So how many have seen these? If you if you if you've been in the park, have you guys looked for those things? Okay. All right, uh, fantastic. And I just wanted to finish up with something. We want to have a little fun. So fun, fun, fun. Yeah. So till the daddy take the TV away. <laughs> can anyone off the top of their head? I, I, it's a giveaway. I got tickets for something uh, courtesy of our um, auto front. It is the Beach Boys. Please Gotta someone raise name your hand. me. Please someone name me. We could call it five or six founding members, but we just want four founding members. Does anyone know who the four four of the six founding members were? No. Anybody? Huh? Okay, Brian is one. It's got to come from one person. Who? Huh? Heidi. What is it? What's the name? Okay, there is a Brian. Does anyone know who they are, Brian? Okay. All right. No. Okay. No. All right. Hold on a second. Does anyone know what this is? This would be related with California beach wear and surf wear and water. Has anyone ever seen one of those? They have a certain name. Oh, what's that? Is that a shirt? Okay. All right, man, you guys got to do your homework. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Because these guys... Because these guys went on a big, a, a big trip. This is for courtesy of the Waterfront Environmental Committee. This is for the uh, Rock of Ages. It's tomorrow at the Fox Theater. Okay. No, thank you, and thanks for helping out. Okay. So. Thanks, Dave. This is our biggest program, the beach cleanup, and the kiosk is becoming great. How many people go out to the lake? I go out there every time, and your eyes go to that kiosk. You want to read them? We want to get more up there. Uh, we don't just need, you know, a, a harp playing, you know, on the corners. We want kiosks. I'm going to bring, <laughs> I'm going to bring Joe up here now to do talk about the storm drain stenciling, which is our third largest project that we do in the committee. Good afternoon. I'd like to take a moment to remember a friend of mine that passed away yesterday. He belonged to the committee. He was on a water, the Macomb County Water Quality Board for a while. His name is uh, Joe, I forgot his name. The race car driver, Joe Yeager. Joe Yeager. Uh, I'd like to take a, a, a moment of silence for him, please. Thank you. Okay. The goal of the storm drain stenciling program is to generate more storm drain awareness in St. Clair Shores. Without knowing it, the small things that we do around our homes has a huge impact on Lake St. Clair. The reason is most of the storm drains in front of our houses go directly into Lake St. Clair, the source of our drinking water. As the volunteers spray paint the message, with the drains with the message, do not dump drains to Lake, they also distribute these door hangers to every home on the block. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, information on the door hangers covers tips on reducing stormwater pollution. One tip is to pick up after your pets. Another tip on household products, never put prescription medications down the toilet. Taking your outdoor, outdated prescription medications to the St. Clair Shores Police Department for disposal prevents them from getting into Lake St. Clair. 
Another tip on lawn care is to sweep grass clippings of excess fertilizer that end up on the sidewalks back onto the lawn, not into the street. The city has a street sweeping program, but as homeowners, we can help by sweeping, sweeping the street gutters every time we cut the lawn. The door hanger contains other tips that can help protect the water quality of Lake St. Clair. Just to note that the only thing that can legally go down the storm drains is rainwater and snow melt. This past year, we had many supporters of the storm drain stenciling program. We had school groups like Lakeview High School, led by teacher Nicole Cozy, and South Lake High School students, led by teachers Gail Ashburn and Diane West. We also had Phil Simlau leading the New Life Christian Youth Group, and Commodore Mike Trollever and his crew. We also had individuals like Peter and Matthew Rabito, Dominic and Peter Tavalleri, Ken Anderson and his granddaughter, Jesse Stevens. Um, Jesse's right here right now, and she'd like to say a couple words for us. Come on up, Jesse. She's the youngest person that was doing some storm drains this year. What was what did you like about the storm drain stenciling program, Jesse? Okay, I spent time with my papa. Spending time with grandpa. Anything else about the storm drain stenciling? Are you going to do it next year? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jesse. Our committee also has an outreach program in the form of a PowerPoint presentation. We go to high schools and middle schools at their request and talk to the students about the project of our committee, problems and solutions of keeping Lake St. Clair clean, and the need to protect water quality of Lake St. Clair. We also reach out to service groups like the Kiwanis, Rotary, and Lions Clubs. Our outreach slideshow is available to anyone who is interested. For information on the storm drain stenciling program, please call the St. Clair Shore DPW at 586-445-5363. For the outreach program, you can call me at 586-774-4750. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. And everybody know Joe St. John? He started this whole thing, what, about 20 or 30 years or so ago? <laughs> Everybody knows you. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, you know, up to this point, we've been talking a lot about water quality and some of our programs, but there, there's been a lot of things that uh, we want to kind of get into a little bit more that talks more about uh, how can we come up with ways on, on minimizing the amount of water that goes to the lake or, or some contaminated water. Down the road here in another 10 minutes, we're gonna have be talking more about uh, com what combined sewers are and what separated sewers are. Uh, but these are some of the programs and I'm, I'm gonna ask Councilman Victali to come up here to talk about rain barrels. But Kite Monroe has a green infrastructure project which it takes areas of the city that are in, in grassy areas and then it, it, it allows water to drain into those grassy areas instead of making pavement out of them. And then what occurs is, this happened at Kite Monroe. Uh, the, the, the water gets on the pavement and then it basically drains through instead of going into storm drains and then to the lake. So these are the types of programs that uh, we're trying to identify for the community and in just a moment we're gonna have a Bill Gamble coming up. But uh, uh, Councilman Vitelli, can you talk about the, the rain barrels a little bit? Sure. Uh, as Mark said, we're very excited about our initiative uh, to minimize the amount of water in our storm drains. Um, rain barrels are useful because they take the runoff from your roof, they put in a barrel that can be utilized to water plants, um, or you can let it drain off slow. Um, it's also good in those tricky locations which are difficult to direct water away from the house. I actually have a, a walkway where I have a rain barrel and uh, you know, because I don't want to trip over a gutter. 
but it's a good way to slow down that water. Uh, Aaron mentioned earlier we had our largest year of sale, selling 64 rain barrels in 2018. And uh, the best news is we're going to have some new colors. So uh, now we can have rain barrels not just for people with red brick houses, but they can match other colors of brick too. Um, <clears throat> the process to get the rain barrels uh, is around the corner here at City Hall. You pay $59.30 to the cashier. You head to the DPW which is over by the Senior Center on Pleasant Avenue. And then you pick up your rain barrel. Uh, Tom Cleaver from We Are Here is uh, offered to help install or um, get in touch with anybody on the committee if you uh, need help with this. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, be, be, before I forget, I just want to also introduce uh, Lakeview Principal Scott Kapla, Kempla is in the audience tonight. Thank you so much for coming out. Send more students. We love them. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to invite Bill Gamble up here so that uh, he can talk more about our programs. Uh, we want to kind of work with him and his programs and Ray Gardens. But before I do that, at the same time, we got Sarah first. Come on, Sarah, first. They're, they're both they're a tag team here, so working together. Okay, um, I um, kind of noticed that a lot of people, when you say rain garden, not sure what you mean. So I just wanted to start by explaining what a rain garden is. Um, it's also called a bioswale, or you can call it rainscaping. <clears throat> and it's pretty simple. It's a garden designed with a shallow dip in the center, and it functions as a natural filter for runoff water. Um, typically, you use native plants just because they're adapted to our ecosystem so there's low maintenance. Um, you can do use wildflowers, grasses, sedges, and even some trees sometimes. Um, and also native plants a lot of times will have a longer tap root which helps hold the soil in place. So you just have a, um, a divot and that will catch some of the water and slow it down. Um, in order to understand why we need rain gardens, we have to look at the changes that have happened with our ecosystems. Um, historically in this area, we had a lot more natural areas, wetlands, forests, prairies, and the ecosystems were intact. Um, now we have a lot of concrete, buildings, grass, wetlands have been filled in for development, um, and that disconnects or sometimes destroys the ecosystem. So by putting in rain gardens, we can start to get some of the benefits that natural systems have on our water quality. Um, and then the next one will just list some of the benefits. Can reduce erosion. Um, the roots, like I said, kind of help to hold the soil in place. When you have plants, it helps stabilize shoreline. Um, it reduces sediment and nutrient loads and flooding. If there's a, a rain event, water moves more slowly through a rain garden. Um, and it also captures particles like pollution and sediment, it filters them, and then more slowly releases it into the water. If you have, if you have like a road, it's just like a slide right into the water and it'll take all the oil from the cars and directly into the lake. So it also increases wildlife habitat and can make it more beautiful. Um, I put no cost and no maintenance. There can be low maintenance like weeding. And once it's established, there's not really any cost to maintain it. Um, but the big thing is rain garden absorbs about 30% more water than just your grass and your lawn. So um, anyone can create a rain garden in your yard um, or the best place is like a wet area, downspell, or just a wet area in your yard. So um, I'm hoping to help the city install some larger, um, larger scale rain gardens um, in the next year and the years to come. So. I uh, hope you'll consider a rain garden in your yard or in your city. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, she said the key thing, everybody can do it. Everybody can. So call us. Get involved with us. If you want to create something somewhere in St. Clair Shores in your yard, give us a call. Come to our committee. We'd like to give you some ideas. These are all ways we can help conserve water. Now, the reason why we're bringing Bill Gamble, the assistant city manager up here, it's, it's really key because, you know, we, he has a great program that's going to talk about and helps, it will add to, minimize some of the water that does go to Chapman. So, here you go, sir. 
Thank you, Mark. Uh, good evening, everyone. Are you going to do this one? Do you have the clicker? Uh, right here. Oh, here it is. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, as as you mentioned earlier, we had the Kite Monroe project, which was very successful. It was a green infrastructure project in a parking lot. It kind of takes on the rain water and then puts it off to these bioswales, kind of helping to reduce that runoff. Another initiative that we were selected by the Clinton River Watershed Council was uh, called Water Towns, and we were one of three communities uh, that was that were selected in 2017. And part of the program was to give us conceptual plans, artists' renderings, and then uh, kind of the project benefit that we can use for grant applications and show you know when when we put in these investments what we get back. So just knowing those cost estimates, those things, it helps us to be able to implement these, these projects. So why green infrastructure? For the reasons that Sarah stated, it helps slow down, it helps retain runoff water, um, and it's especially important in these combined sewer areas. So when part of this program was to evaluate various locations for the implementation of green infrastructure, and a couple spots were investigated. Ultimately, uh, the Nine Mac corridor was selected. Uh, and if you can see on this chart over here, it's also in a combined sewer area, which is that eight and a half mile drain. Um, and if you look at the, the overhead, the aerial, you can tell it's characterized by a great deal of uh, impervious surface. It's very, there's a lot of asphalt. So when the rain hits that, it's just going right into the storm, combining, it's going to Chapman, it's getting treated. Um, so if we can slow that down then, or help retain some of that runoff, that's going to benefit us. We won't have to treat that. It won't lead to bigger uh, to discharges, partially treated discharges. So our consultants, the consultants looked at this. They came up with four different locations. Um, the nice thing about 9MAC, it's a walkable area. It's going to be, people are going to be able to see the improvements. It could be kind of a demonstration project. Um, and so they broke it down. Here's uh, some of those things didn't show up here, but you have the different, you have tree boxes. They're going to do um, permeable pavers, some bioretention, so the rain gardens and different sites. So here's the existing the rendering. You see it's going to have now. All these calculations with 100% reduction on this one, these are based off of a two-year, 24-hour storm event, which is 2.26 inches for a 24-hour period. So it's a model that they use to then calculate how much water is going to be slowed down on those types of models. So this one's, for this area, they're doing uh, permeable pavers. This is another rendering where this is the existing site, adding some bioretention there. You see, like, uh, this one's 96% reduction in that one, 27 in the other one. They like to pick an area, too, where if it's a bigger rain event, there's still the storm drain, so it's kind of helping to filter that uh, water before it goes in to overflow. But you can see it also helps beautify the area. Uh, here's a couple. So site three, more bioretention. Um, this is by the library or the post office, I'm sorry, this is uh, another bioswale. And you can see it's kind of dipped down so it makes sure the rain goes to that area. Here's the overall calculation. So for that for that 24 hour, that two inches, 2.26 inches per 24 hours, you see that they have a site total of 101,000 gallons um, and the reduction for the overall site, it's gonna be reducing at 79%, almost 80,000 gallons of water for one of those events. Um, the Water Talents program, they've been working throughout the watershed. So we we're fortunate to have this. We're gonna keep applying for some grants to implement this. I wanted to show you one where they did a rendering for Clinton Township. And then ultimately, this is the parking lot. You can see it's kind of, it's down from the rest of the parking lot. It takes on the water, it helps filter it. And it also looks, it's very nice. I mean, compared to what it was, just kind of with the grass area, now you kind of have more vegetation. So a couple benefits to it. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for to the 
I appreciate all your help, Sarah. And I, they volunteered to help plant these if we get the grant. So, and council, appreciate their support uh, giving the matching funds. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Um, and part of this, like, like we were saying before, uh, this is good information, great information, Bill, about what we can do in St. Clair Shores. We can do it in our yards. We can create better areas. We can hold back some of the, the, the rainwater off of our roofs and things like that. And, and we're going to get into a, a little bit more of a discussion here another uh, about uh, what, what's going on with our sewers and, and, and what is a combined sewer. But uh, as I'm trying to collect what... Uh, Kurt, Kevin Hertel mentioned earlier in, the, in our presentation about getting the money for Chapman, but all these things that Bill talked about and Sarah talked about and Councilman Vitali talked about, if you know, they may seem small individually, but as you put these all together, it all synergistically creates a wonderful way to collect more of our stormwater, and now we're going to try to find ways to collect our sanitary sewer so that we don't have. $300 million projects. Uh, I know Candace Miller has Chapman. There's a basic design out right now, and they're trying to select a consultant to go forward with, with this new project. Um, and hopefully they can make St. Clair Shores uh, the nine mile pier an area where, where, where you can hook together stormwater controls, like Bill mentioned, and the community can use them. I'm hoping we could put a, a kayak launch out here or something like that. Um, and again, I'm not going to get a lot of details, but uh, Kevin mentioned it already, but this is an example at Chapman where they want to, uh, the picture to the left is where they're trying to kind of separate some of the flows, maybe in essence at Chapman have some of the more uh, contaminated flows go into the chamber as well as some of the stormwater flows may go out to the canal and, and drain to the right. So di different things that they're working on. Um, but, and they have a schedule. This is a pretty quick schedule. They're going to be designing this over the next uh, two to three months uh, or get started on the work and get it done over maybe six months design period. So uh, now I'm going to turn it over. You know, we've talked a lot about uh, the infrastructure. Um, I'm going to ask Ron Dempsey to come on up. And what better yet is to have the DPW here to really explain what's going on in our city? Because I'm, I'm a civil engineer, but I'm telling you, I don't know where the combined sewers are and so on and so forth. So... Here you go, Ron. Could you uh, give us a little talk about Thank you, that? Mark. Um, I've been this. with the DPW for about 21 and a half years now, and I started out in the sewer division, and for the last eight years, I am the uh, supervisor of the DPW, along with uh, motor pool, forestry, and uh, the sewer department. Uh, we have a great crew. They do a good job. And uh, as you can see on the diagram here, that uh, the area shaded in blue are the footing tiles that go around the perimeter of your home. And because our, our city is quite old, the plumbing codes were a lot different back then and sump pumps aren't being used because they weren't required when these homes were built. So all the rainwater that goes down your basement walls go into the shaded blue pipe, which then go into your main sanitary line and go to Detroit for treatment. And uh, This is a diagram of a combined sewer system where the street water also goes into the sanitary system for treatment. And that area on the map over here is shaded in green. It's a very small area. The other area shaded on the south end of the town are street drains that end up in the county interceptors, which go to Detroit for treatment. So there's uh, you know anything you can do to reduce the amount of water going into the system for treatment. Um, it will stop the uh, overflows into the lake. And um, a lot of the rain barrels are a good example of uh, a way to capture that water before it gets in the system. Uh, extending your downspouts, disconnecting your downspouts is an ordinance in the city, so they should already be disconnected. Um, but extending them away from your, your home will minimize the water going down that ends up going to Detroit for treatment. Um, regrading your, your, uh, around your home. A lot of these older homes, um, on the sides of the homes, there isn't a real big area. You, you, you cut a three foot wide strip next to your neighbor and may not have realized that through 57 years of rain events that there's a little black 
asphalt gap where they may have uh, waterproofed your basement walls, but now it's exposed, so you should slope that away. Raise the grade, slope it away, and get the water to run away from the house. Um, it's another good thing to do and consider. But um, we're, we're real happy to be a part of this and help out the, the committee as much as we can. I know we uh, coordinate the dumpster delivery for the waterfront cleanup. It's a very big event. It, it's handled fantastically. I bring along some radios for communications on bus, bus pickups and whatnot. And I'm um, very proud to be a part of it and helping out. And uh, I'm uh, real proud of the, the people involved that, that make this uh, town so wonderful. And I didn't know, Dave, we were having a competition, but I'm a Lakeshore alum. And uh, my kids do attend Lakeview, so. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, hey, Ron, can you explain? I, I want to get you a little bit because, again, this is a key picture right here with the city uh, because there, there's always that discussion. You know, what is a combined sewer versus what is a separated sewer? So, again, in St. Clair Shores, most of the city is separated. Correct. Correct. Uh, but, again, there's a small area that's a totally combined, and there was a slide we had about that where you got sanitary sewer as well as downspouts as well as streets. Well, the streets, so, so yeah, the, the area in green, the streets are actually connected to the sanitary sewer. The pipes are larger there. Um, it actually, we, at least a amount of our problems are there, but it is combined water going for, for treatment. We do get the calls in May after the helicopters fall and we get a rain event because the storm drains in that green area. There's only four or six holes on the basin to restrict the flow to go in to minimize, you know, an overabundance of street water. So we get calls, oh, my street's flooded and we got to go out and rake the, the little helicopters off the six holes in the street. And, um, okay. And, and what's the difference t between the totally combined, right? And these are like partially Well, they separate? are. They're, our storm drains, actually, I found out from Director Babcock that these, this shaded area down in the south here, with the exception of the blue, um, and this yellow area here actually is not. That goes to the Alger pump station, which goes to the Milk River. But the orange and the pink, those lines are connected to yeah. county county-owned drains that go to Detroit for treatment. So, so, so do they go to Jefferson and then go through the Martyr Road pump station? Okay. That's correct. But, but then what happens is when there's a lot of flow and they get us cut off at the Martyr Road because there's no capacity down south, then they in turn have to go to Chapinen. Correct. Okay, so, so just look at, this is a large area. Look how big this area is. It's not... I mean, it's like a, a third of St. Clair Shores just in storm water, and, you know, that's going to Chapinen. But then also there's all the storm water up here that's coming down Jefferson as well and going to Chapinen. So that, I think that's well, why. The, the northern portion, that's all sanitary water with the footing drain water. The rest of the, the non-shaded area drains directly to the lake. Okay, uh, the drain, the, the storm drains. The storm drains okay. directly to the lake. And that's why there's these storm drains, and that's why Joe does his stormwater drain uh, stenciling, because we don't want people putting junk down there. And a matter of fact, even, we just learned this just this week, uh, Lucas had a, his friend that goes to Lakeshore, she put some sampling uh, ports in the storm drains, and she took them out, and she had high levels of phosphates and and in essence, it's fertilizers. So I guess there's a lot of pollutants. So the more we can do to, to, to minimize the amount of junk or stuff that's going into our sewers, like leaves and fertilizer, we really got to keep that out because you can see how this is going to the lake. And that's why we have lake pollution. So we want to work together with the community to educate. And that's why we kind of you know, want to, maybe in the future we'll have more of this type of education just so people can understand. At least, at least to me, if I understand why I want to minimize it. It makes it easier for me to, oh, yeah, I will you know, tell my guy not to, sp to spray it in the street or something like that. So, um, And then you mentioned the other items. You can put downspout uh, extenders out to keep it out of our storm, our storm, our sanitary sewer and in in the, in the, in rain barrel. So I guess we're going to keep on talking about these because these are what our goals are of a committee. We want to work together with the community to find simple ways. These are simple ways that we can all work together. So. Yep. All right, thank you, Ron. Thank oh, you. We have a question, yeah. Good, good time. We're ready for some questions here. So it's not so much oh, like the, I don't, even, I don't know. 
It's not so much like the rain. That's okay to go in the storm. It's the debris and stuff that we don't want. Because don't you want like more water in there? And yes, yes. But a lot of times when you... So the question was, don't we still want storm drains or storm water to go to the lake? Yes, we do. But we want clean water. Um, and a lot of times the storm drains are full of sediment, you know, and we can't pump out all the sediment. So the sediment has, has degraded leaves. It's got a lot of fertilizers. It's got uh, oil. People sometimes change their oil, uh, paint that washes off your driveway. That's why last year we did a, a, a service agreement where we want to say, uh, if you're going to wash your car, wash it on the grass. Whenever I wash my truck, my neighbors are always wondering, why am I parking on the front lawn? You know, my, my wife kills me. She says, what are you doing that for? But it's, it's, it's stopping the water and the, and the uh, detergents from going down into the street and going down in the storm drains. Yes, Joe wants to say something. When it rains out, the, the city takes a bath. Everything from the streets, from the houses, backyards, uh, dog poop from the backyard, everything washes into the lake when it rains. Right. And, and, and just to clarify, too, though, if in this area of the city, when, we, when there's a downspout, right, or a footing drain, that's going into the sanitary. We, I mean, that's, I mean it, it's inevitable it's going to happen, but a little things we can do to direct the water away from the house. It's better for your foundation, too. You don't want water in your, in your basement. But the more water you can get away from your house, that's the least that goes into the sanitary sewers. And then when we do have an overflow, that minimizes some of the, the, the flow to, overflows to the lake. Is there any other questions? This is, uh, we're about done with time here. And I uh, want to make sure we get everybody's uh, input here. Any questions? Um, all right. Well, hey, thanks a lot. For well, thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate our resource members and all our, our committee members. You guys do a great job at really making things different for our community. Thank you so much.